Hi friends, welcome back to LGF. Today we are going to start basics of control system, right? We have received so many comments for the last video lecture. So I want to clear you some points. There will be no discontinuity with the control system. Soon we'll cover this subject. Okay, friends. So please don't worry about this. Let's start now the basics of control system. Friends, if you are discussing about the control system, let's understand why we have a need to control someone. Why we have a need to control the systems in any process. Friends, let's take system S. This is the system S. We are giving some input to it. Okay. Perfectly fine. And we are taking some output from this system. What will be the condition for the output? The output should be such that it should fulfill your requirement. Whatever desired requirement is there or uh, desired value is there of the your output should be fulfilled by the system or not. Okay. So how you will do this? How you will manage this? You are applying some input to the system. You want some desired value of the output. How you will do that? By applying the control system. It's like you have a bike. You want to run that bike at the speed of 30 kmph suppose. How you will manage that? By the help of accelerator or not? By the help of accelerator, if your speed is more than 30, it's 50 kmph, you will reduce the pressure on your accelerator and you will come to the 30 kmph. Is it okay? So, the accelerator is nothing but the control system over here. The accelerator is controlling your speed. Okay. So, your desired value is 30 kmph. You are getting your desired value by controlling the system. So that's why this is about the control system or in other words, can I say like this control system in, is means by which we can get the desired output, whatever you want, you can get with the help of control system. In other words, we can change the system functioning as per the requirements. So as per your requirement, you can change the system. Okay. What are the example? See, this is the refrigerator given over here. You can control, you can set your points, freezer points and all. So this is also the control system. You can control the entire functioning of the refrigerator. Is that okay? So all electronics equipments, electrical equipments nowadays are the control system. Or we can say every system is controlled. Every system is controlled or manipulated. Manipulated in such a way that it will produce the desired output. Whatever you want, it will produce it. Is it okay? Let's take another example. This is the electric press or iron you can say. This is another example of the control system. Everything is controlled over here. Okay. The best example is the robot. Fully control this system or intelligent system. Right. Now, your electric fan, ceiling fan. All are the so in this world everything is controlled. Control on the basis of what the desired value. What you are looking for, you can manage or manipulate that system to get the desired output. So in the world, everything is which is made by the human are controlled, except one thing which is not controlled in the world, and that is this fellow. If you know. Do you know this fellow? This is the North Korean emperor, right? He is a made person. He is not controlled. He is threatening to America that soon will fire the missile over you. See the situation of this. Okay. So, only one thing is uncontrolled. Okay. I am just kidding to you. So, let's come to the next types of control system we will discuss about. We have two types of control system. Open loop. Now I'll show you what is the open loop control system and closed loop control system. For this, I have taken two examples. In the first example, let's consider that you have bike and daily you are going to your college from your home, home to college. Okay. 
Now, what is the condition? In the first case, I'll consider the open loop transfer function. In the second case, I'll show you the closed loop transfer function. Open loop transfer function according to the conditions of open loop. There is a no restriction to go from home to college. Restriction of speed. At any speed you can go, the ultimate goal is you have to reach to college. Okay, so let's consider that if this is the system, system S, let's take it. The input is you have to go to college and the output is you have reached the college. Right, so there is a no restriction that what speed you have to go. Okay, or at what time you have to go. Only one condition is there. You have to start your bike at your home and you have to reach to your college only. This is kind of the open loop con control system. Okay, but what I'm trying to say is it will be, I think, clear over here in the second example. Second example says the condition is same. You have to go to college from your home with your bike. Okay. Now the condition is, in the first case, there was no restriction with you. Okay, but in the second case, your mom told you, please maintain the speed of 60 kmph. Don't go beyond this. Okay, and you respect your mom. So what you decided, you decided that yes, you'll keep this speed, 60 kmph. In this case, you started your bike and you are going to your college. In between, suppose at some instant, you are getting speed of your bike is 70 kmph. Okay, perfectly fine. In the first case, there was no such restriction like speed restriction. In the second case, you have a restriction of 60 kmph. I can say this is the desired output. So, suppose in between, you get the speed 70 kmph, what you will do? You will correct yourself. How you will get this information by speedometer? The speedometer of your bike will indicate that you are running with 70 kmph. Instantly, the signal will go to your mind. Is it okay to you? You have watched the information, means you are feeding the information from the system. This is the part of system or not speedometer because the bike is your system. So from the system, you are getting the feedback. Perfectly fine. Now what your mind will do? Your mind will send the information or signal to your hands. Is it okay? What will be the signal? Signal will say to your hands, please reduce the acceleration or accelerate, accelerate less. Okay. So, you will reduce the acceleration and you will maintain the speed 60 kmph. This is your speed. So, in this entire journey, the same thing will happen again and again. If your speed is more than 60, again, you will correct yourself. Means you are feeding some information from the system. If you are sitting over here, what you are doing? You are feeding the information from the system. And according to that, you are taking the action. Is it okay, friends? So, this is the example of control loop system in which you are correcting yourself from the starting to ending point. Okay, so in the control system, if I'll represent this, or you can say in the first case, you are moving with any speed, whatever you want, you can take. In the second speed, second case, you are going with the constant speed. In this case, there was no restriction. In this case, there was restri restriction of 60 kmph. You have to maintain this speed. Okay. So, in the open loop system, I can say, if this is your system, you have given some input to it. You are taking output from it. There is a no feedback from the output to the input. But in the closed loop system, you have the same system. Okay. To this system, you feed the input. 
you are taking output this system has the ability to correct itself you will take the feedback from the output will feed to the input so you will correct yourself is it okay this is over here this is the mixer it will mix the input and your feedback signal okay so this will be the controlled output okay or the error output here the it it will be error signal this error signal will go to the system system will correct itself because of the controller inside of it and get the desired value this is the closed loop control system okay so this is the brief introduction about this later we will consider it so you can see over here let me raise some part over here see here is the input controller controller is your mind this mind is for the example i showed you okay control signal control signal will be generated from the controller and this is the process and output this is the open loop system open loop system there is a no feedback from the output to input but in the second case if this is the input this entire thing is your system in the system there is a process and in the system itself there is a this is the controller this is the outer from the system why because in the case whatever i showed you the mind mind was the controller and it's belong to you is it correct so system parameters will obey the control signals order is it okay so from the output what we are going to do we are feeding output to input so this output block will consist by measuring element measuring element in the speedometer speedometer it's measuring the speed or not and that output of the speedometer we are feeding to the controller controller means mind you are feeding the all information to your mind your mind will giving signal to your hands means your mind is sending the control signal to your hand and according to that your hands are taking action to the process okay so this is the kind of closed loop control system i hope it's clear to you now let's come to the advantages and disadvantages of the open loop control system and the closed loop control system okay friends so what are the advantages of open loop system i hope open loop system is clear to you so can i say it's simple and economic why simple because the circuitry is very simple if this is your system you are giving input to it you are taking taking output from it simple circuit no stability problem is there we are not talking about any stability to it stability will come when there is a desiredness means that when you have desired output you are talking about the desired output so you can compare that whether you are getting desired output or not your system is stable or not here there is the no case of stability so what are the disadvantages of this system disadvantages inaccurate it will be not accurate why why inaccurate whatever input you are giving corresponding to that system parameters you are getting the output is there any correction over here suppose your system is designed for example i'm showing you okay your system is designed to give you 10 when you apply 1 but instead of 10 your system is giving you the number 8 it means it it's giving error to you but there is a no such condition that you can correct this 8 okay so this may inaccurate sometimes this is unrealizable and affected by the system parameter variation and external noise if the system parameters will change or external noise will come into the system it will affect the input output relation i hope it's clear to you now what are the examples traffic light control see this is the example of open loop system open loop system means this system is the control system no problem at all the information is feed up that for 1 minute there should be red light 
for one minute there should be green light everything is fed up so according to that according to the system your output is coming after one minute you are getting red light then then green light okay like this this is not the self correction system self correction if this is the self or the closed loop control system what it will do when the rush is less it will always give the green signal when the traffic is very less it will give green signal immediately but in the practical case it's not doing like this always it will take 1 minute or 1.5 minute whatever is given to this system the second ca case is electric washing machine the same thing is there automatic coffee server and bread toaster so these are the examples of open loop control system okay friends now come to the closed loop control system what are the advantages in the second case the problem the example i showed you in the second case where the restriction of speed you had remember so based on that what are the advantages of control system this is the accurate and reliable why accurate the closed loop control system because you have to maintain suppose 60 k mph by the help of this control system what you will do closed loop control system i am taking about you will correct yourself if your speed is more than 60 you will correct yourself and will maintain speed 60 only that's why i can say it's accurate and reliable reduced effect of parameter variation parameter variation means it's related to the system this is the system to the system this is input and this is output if by some external means there is a parameter changing of this particular system if and your system is control system so again it will correct itself okay because because of this uh, parameter variation your output will change if your output will change your feedback will change your feedback will change your error signal will change your error signal will change so based on that you will change the process also so i think this point is clear to you now reduce the effect of non linearity also non linearity will be very less into the closed loop control system i hope it's clear to you okay now let's come to the next one let's discuss about the disadvantages so the system is complex and costly definitely why the system is complex because we are introducing something extra what is the extra that is the feedback path or feedback elements so this is costly than open loop transfer function or not or open loop control system or not reduce the gain with the negative feedback later we'll discuss about this this is very important point whenever you will introduce the negative feedback to the system it will reduce the gain of it okay friends now let's come to the examples so these are the examples electric iron see this is the electrical or electric iron in this everything is control this is the closed loop control system if your temperature is to particular point let's say it's a it's a 50 degree centigrade this is your temperature level and your this electric iron is setted with this point or desired output is 50 degree whenever the temperature will exceed this it will get cut off okay from the external supply it will cut itself so this system is controlling okay so what is the ultimate purpose of the control system closed loop control system to get the desired output or to maintain the desired output is it okay i hope it's clear to you now some more examples dc motor speed control human respiratory system autopilot system here is given human respiratory system everything is well controlled over here this is the natural closed loop control system okay Let's come to the comparison between open loop and closed loop. This is the theory part that's why we are discussing about the open loop and control loop in details and sometime you may have some uh, one question of one mark about this open loop and closed loop control system for the IES you are having so many question based on 
these two concepts open loop and closed loop so in the open loop the system is less accurate but the closed loop due to closed loop accuracy is more perfectly fine simple and easy to construct yes complicated and difficult okay generally stable in operation the open loops are stable in operation stability depends on the system component why i'm saying here generally okay wh what were the what were the examples of this open loop traffic light you have seen bread toaster you have seen generally they are stable why they are stable they have fed up with 1 minute red light 1 minute green light okay so they will maintain this 1 minute there will be less error over here so the output is stable so generally i'm talking about but if there will be some output noise and something it will affect the this set output okay so generally it's stable we considered but here the stability is entirely depends on the system components or not because we introduce the feedback over here also now the performance is not good if non linearity is present if the system is working in the non linear region so performance is not good non linear means it's changing environment okay so your performance will be not good for the open loop system but for the closed loop control system everything will be better why because here the correction system is given it will correct itself is there any change whether it's a system parameter changes or input changes whatever it will correct itself and set the output at the desired value i hope it's clear to you okay friends now come to the laplace transform this is very important because now we'll deal with the laplace transform and the transfer function in the later definition of the transfer function we'll discuss about this so before going to start that particular thing let's understand the laplace transform the laplace transform is a well established mathematical technique for solving differential equations basically we we'll use the laplace transform to solve the differential equation this is the part of the mathematics so i assume that you people know about it very well okay so what is the formula for that fs i can write a the laplace transform of ft also the laplace transform of ft is denoted like this i can write it f of s 0 to infinity this is ft e to the power minus st dt okay so this is the laplace transform of function ft so can you see over here initially your function is in t domain and you are going to convert it into s domain this s is nothing but frequency domain this t is nothing but time domain so what we are doing with the help of laplace transform or what is laplace tra transform all about to convert the system from one domain to another domain okay friends so let's come to this what does the laplace transform do the main idea behind the laplace transform is that we can solve an equation yes containing differential and integral terms by transforming the equation in t space to s space so this is the fundamental reason we are using here in the control system we are using the laplace transform to make the system easy to make the equation easy and we can solve the equation is it okay so so friends here are the laplace transform of some functions are given as i told you that i assume you all people know about this this because this is the mathematics part in the transform theory of the mathematics we have seen all these formulas so please remember this formula this one is very important okay so i'll use directly in the problems okay so let's come to the transfer function now what is the transfer function 
This is the transfer function. If you will apply some input to the system, you will get some output from the system. So whatever the process is done by the system or the, you know, I can say if this is the system, yes, definitely this is the system. So the system is providing its own value to input and giving some output. So the parameters of that system I call with the transfer function of the system. Okay. So can I say a control system consists of an output as well as input signal. Yes, this is output, this is input. The output is related to input through a function called the transfer function. This function is represented by a blob. This is the blob. And the complete diagram of control system using these blocks, which represents transfer function and arrows, which represents various signal is collectively known as the block diagram of a control system. Okay. Now in the Laplace transform, if the input is, wait a minute, if the input is represented by RS and the output is represented by CS, then the transfer function the transfer function tf is output upon input. Output is cs denoted by gs. Okay, so this is the transfer function. If you'll observe this very carefully, we are using this output and input in frequency domain. Okay, friends, not in time domain. If you are thinking that suppose in the time domain you are getting output yt you are giving the input xt and you are writing your transfer function is yt divided by xt. This is completely wrong, not like this. In the frequency domain only, you can write the transfer function is the Laplace transform of the output to the Laplace transform of the input provided initial conditions are zero. This is one mark get question get 2012 one mark get question what is the laplace transform of the sorry what is the transfer function of the system the options were given the laplace transform the ratio of the laplace transform of output to input provided initial condition or not zero so one of the options were given there the transfer function the laplace transform of output divide by the Laplace transform of input provided initial conditions are zero is transfer function. So the transfer function of a control system is defined as the ratio of the Laplace transform of the output variable to Laplace transform of the input variable assuming all initial conditions to be zero. Okay friends, now real control system is starting by the definition of transfer function only. In the entire control system from the first unit to the last unit, we are going to discuss about the transfer function only. Find out the transfer function, find out the transfer function, find out the transfer function. Is it okay? So this is very, very important. Two times this same question came. This is gate two time question. And one mark question. What is the transfer function? So transfer function is Laplace transform of output divided by Laplace transform of input provided initial conditions are zero. Is it okay? So methods of obtaining a transfer function, what are the methods? So the first one is the block diagram method. The transfer function of each element of a control system is represented by a block diagram. Okay, we'll consider the block to represent the transfer function of any system. Transfer function of any system I'll use with the help of this block. Okay, I'll give input to it. I'll take output from it. I hope it's clear to you. So block diagram reduction techniques are applied to obtain the desired transfer function. 
So we'll discuss about this techniques also. Okay. Now let's come to the next one. Signal flow graphs. So what are the signal flow graphs? So instead of blocks, we directly use the signal flow graph only. It means like this we represent the system. Here suppose this is the input R S. Here suppose the input of oh sorry output of C S. These are the various blocks initially. Now this blocks transfer function is represented by this line and arrow on it. Transfer function A. This is B. This is C kind of. This A is the transfer function of the system between point one and two. This is three, and let's take it for output. So between two to three, the system transfer function will be B. So this is represented by this signal flow. So this is all about the two days lecture. This was the theory part. From the next part onwards, we'll start the problems. Okay. In the next class, we'll discuss. about the block diagrams about the signal flow graph these two are the very very important as per the gate exam because every year you are getting one question either it may be from block diagram or sfg and they are asking find out the transfer function okay friends